So, in the world that we're talking about, which is the real world, there's a limit. No more than one bit, and that means a plus or a minus, one little dot per Planck area. The Planck area is a certain unit of area that's made up out of the fundamental constants of nature. It happens to be about 10 to the minus 33 centimeters on a side. It's far smaller than anything that physics studies experimentally, but no more. Where'd it go? It disappeared. Uh, okay, black hole, I, something. Yeah, they went in the black hole. <laughs> yeah. No more than one bit, that means a black dot or a white dot, per Planck area. All right, That's so let, let's just back, back that up for a second. Um, just as you need a certain amount of resolution on a piece of standard film or a digital CCD chip, to produce an image that's recognizable of your lovely pets or your kids or right. something like that. Uh, in physics, one bit of information, is it a traditional bit as though? Yes, yeah, so it's a yes or no question. A yes or no uh, question, so it's like down, zero one, a zero one, one bit yeah. Yeah, zero one. Is, is necessary uh, to specify a Planck space, which is an infinitesimal but measurable uh, a little chunk of space. Well, beyond our ability to measure at the present, but yes. All right. Uh, and so what it says, I mean, in, in, in essence, what it says is this entire room, everything that's in it, can be in principle described mathematically in terms of degrees of freedom, structures on the boundaries, on the walls of the room, with never needing more than one bit of information per Planck area. That was very radical. That was very surprising because people had always associated information with volume. We have another picture, but uh, maybe you want to go around. For well, let's go. No, let's let's go to uh, okay. this is the pixel. The pixels and the voxels. Okay, let's do the uh, pixel voxel. That's the next two slides. Sure Victoria. which one come up first. First, the uh, pixels. All right, this is a, right. obviously a two D. Can we jump? Can we jump to the other one first? All right, Where'd let's the do one? the voxels the first. first. Okay. All right, there's the room. If you like, there's the room, and I'm going to describe the room, everything that's in the room, by dividing it up into little tiny cells. A cell, let's say, no bigger than an atom. And what can we ask about a cell? We can ask, is there or isn't there an atom in it? Of course, we can ask what type of atom, but let's ignore that. Is there or isn't there an atom in it? And if we didn't have to worry about the type of the atom, that would be a complete description of everything that's in the room. And so there would be one decision for each voxel. A voxel is a word that means a little cube. There would be one bit of information per voxel. It's either empty or it's full. All right, so we've divided up this room uh, in, in, in each Planck space. Well, I, I was talking about atoms, but yes. All right, right for, in, in right. each bigger than a Planck space that we've decided to choose, right. we're asking the question, is there an atom in there? And there's a yes or a no answer to that. And we right. reconstruct the entire space in right. information terms in, information. in a cube like this. Right. And we got someplace there are atoms, someplace there's not. I would say in this room would probably be a lot of yeses, probably, right? More, many more no's than yeses. You think? Oh, oh yeah. Well, that's the room right. Is space empty. is mostly empty. Yeah. yeah, the room is almost all empty space. It always it's annoys me but, uh, to hear that yeah. always, but yeah. yeah. Well. Um, anyway, okay, so, so now, right. now that's the 3D. Yeah. So what's yeah. the other picture? Well, what we found, in essence, is that's too much information. No room can ever have as much information as is implicit in this picture here. The amount of information that it takes to describe the room is more like this picture here. One bit of information per, per surface area. So I like to say the world is pixelated, not voxelated. The world is made up, or the degrees of freedom of the world, the most accurate description we can ever have is in terms of a number of degrees of freedom which is proportional to the area and not the volume. So it's actually the reverse of our intuition. And Very much. Gerard, uh, help me out here. So we like to think of, uh, gosh, you know, movies are great, but wouldn't it be fabulous to, to have IMAX 3D? In fact, what physics says is you can get all the information in your 3D high-res reality world on a 2D surface. Let me just, one thing before I want to get these guys. Yeah, yeah. The only thing is that the two-dimensional description is going to be monstrously scrambled, very difficult to decode, very difficult to see what it's a picture of. That's the, that's the cost of coding information in two dimensions instead of three. 